is with you. And if God be for you, who can be against? Am I right about this? Amen. Stop thinking small. We are living large. Satan has vowed to rob you. How is he going to get it done? Through keeping a person blind. Keeping you fearful, keeping you hung up on the intellectual. And he knows that if you don't have spiritual knowledge, he can steal it. So, notice how many years Jacob worked for Laban. Come on down here in verse 41. And I have been 20 years in your house. And I served you 14 years for your daughters and six years for your cattle. And you've changed my wages 10 times. Now, here's what I'm saying to you. You were never meant to work this long at that job and not be rich by now. One more time, I'm gonna deal with you one more time. Now you can look at me as if you wanna look at me as some kind of simpleton, but I'm here with revelation knowledge as your prophet. And I'm telling you right now that you have been being stolen from that God wants you rich. He said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, and God said, he's going to make, make of you a great nation, bless you and make your name what? Great. And you shall be a blessing. Look at that same verse in the Amplified Translation. And he said, and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant, come on, increase, say increase, say increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished and you will be a blessing dispensing goods to us. You, you can't bless them unless you bless. So I'm saying that the enemy is trying to keep us from that. Now let's look at Isaac, what he did. Because I want you to read this until it gets into your spirit. This is Genesis and chapter 26, starting at verse 2. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Don't go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land that I'm going to tell you of. Sojourn in this land. Sojourn means walk around in it like you own it. Come on, you are no longer renting. You are now taking ownership. Uh, and I'll be with you and bless you. Uh, for unto thee and to thy seed will I give all these countries. And I'll perform the oath that I swore to Abraham. I'm going to do this. See, God doesn't need your ability. He needs your obedience. Because he going to do it. Now go all the way down to verse 12. So he told him, don't leave here. Why? Because if you leave here, you're going to try to depend on the world. And once you depend on the world, you're going to negate my blessing. So stay with me, saith the Lord. Glory to God. I'm talking to somebody right over here. And Isaac sowed in that land and received it in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went for it and grew till he became very great. Now we've looked at those two scriptures in the message translation, because we want you to get the full impact of what he's saying to you. Isaac planted crop in that land and it took and took in a huge harvest. Now don't be trying to guess how huge, huge is. You got a Holy Ghost inside of you and you need to ask the Holy Ghost, paint a picture in me of what huge is. Because my definition of huge is one bedroom. Hey, wait a minute. Now give me your definition of what huge is. Watch this. And it's already given to you. And Frank, you don't. And took in a huge harvest. God blessed him. Next verse. And the man got richer. 
richer and richer. Let me add some more to that. And richer 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 by the day. Boy, that's good preaching right there. <laughs> Until he was what? Not wealthy. Now, why am I telling you this? Because there's work to do. Part of it is spiritual. Part of it is natural. Guaranteed. Spiritual, save the souls. Natural, give them a school. Come on. Spiritual, I'm telling you, it's two parts to it. And that's why he gave you two parts. He gave you Christ, who gives you the spiritual of being born again, and the blessing of Abraham, which is a tangible blessing. Is this the right bunch I'm talking to? So, when I say that everybody up in here can be a millionaire. I am not trying to, Im trying to impress somebody with some get rich quick scheme. That is now I'm talking about Abraham's seed. And I'm talking about the reason why you gotta be rich is because you gotta help somebody else. Man. All right, let's just see what else I got. Cause I got a couple more things. Are, are you, how you doing? You doing okay? Everybody doing okay? All right. So you're never law, learn, ne designed to live, uh, to work that long at that job and not be rich. So now if you just read all that, you, you can see. Okay. So what's the problem? The problem is mostly with the teaching that we've had. We have not had the kind of teaching that could take us into Canaan. Now, this, let me give you just one example of this. Now what Satan does is the enemy tries to raise up someone um, because of blindness. He tries to raise up someone to occupy how high places uh, that those people will be able to set the standards and uh, affect the culture according to Satan's plan. For example, Here's a book. I showed it in the first two services. And this is a primer. It is the book that was used back in the day. It's called A New England Primer, introduced in Boston in 1690 by Benjamin Harris and was first a textbook printed in America, first textbook printed in America. For a hundred years after its introduction, the New England Primer was the beginning textbook for students until 1900. And this was found textbook uh, in the American schools. Now, in this textbook, this Bible brings in the spirit. Now let me tell you what I'm think, talking about. That Satan knows your three parts. But he tries to get people to think they're only body and soul. Got it? That's why I say you can't go to the world to find out really um, about you. So what happens is that he has taken these books or this thinking out of the school. 
Watch this. Legally. Put it out, and if you put it back in there, you'll get arrested. Now, what did they do? That Satan, because he knows that if you don't have spiritual knowledge, you're getting dark knowledge. And dark knowledge can help you matriculate in this world, but watch, it can't free you. You can't get free without Jesus. Whomever the Son sets free is truly free. So this is it. And so now everything is scientific. And they left off the spiritual. So if you look at this, the Bible brings you back to the spirit. And without it, you only have the scientific. And Satan's job is to leave mankind with unbelief. Unbelief is not believing nothing. Unbelief is believing something God didn't say. So, now, people are only going with what is humanly reasonable. So that's not reasonable. We tried to get out of uh, the house that we were first staying in when we first got here. And, and, uh, and so uh, we we're trying to save up money. Every time we tried to save money, the car would break down. Something would happen and the enemy would rob us. Said, wait a minute, that's okay. God said, why don't you decree what you want? Now that came after three day fast and me just studying, I just got into this word of God. Fasting doesn't move God, it moves you. So you can hear the one who's trying to give you the answer to get you out of that situation. So what did I do? Meditate the word of God. What is meditation? A God given process that provides a permanent change in your thinking. It re-alters your soul. Now, that thing can flow through me. I spoke it. After that, he said, decree what you want. I said, we'll be out of this house in seven days. Now, when I said that, I don't know how we getting out. Why did I pick seven days? Cause my helper told me. The Holy Spirit said, that's the level of your faith. He knows the level of your faith and what you need so he can help you decree things that are within the framework of what God can do for you because of where you are in your belief. Are y'all with me? Six days? I said, baby, we'll be out of here in six days. Here's what she said. Where are we going? I said, I don't know where we're going, but we'll be out of here. She said, okay, all right. Five days. I said, baby, we'll be out of here in five days. I asked you yesterday, where are we going? I said, baby, listen, there ain't no one even getting upset about it. We'd be out of here in five days. Well, where are we going? See, by faith you receive. That's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. That you receive what God tells you by faith. Now, once you get it, hang on to it. Because you got a robber that's trying to rob you. Folks, to make a long story short, miracles happen like I don't know what, and we got out in seven days. How about when I was in seminary? I said, boy, I took some courses. I said, Lord, have mercy, I didn't got too many courses. And some of these Greek things and, and Hebrew things, uh, the words are a mile long. I said, what am I going to do now? God said, get in the word. I said, where is it? He said, it's over in Proverbs. He said, the thoughts, he said, um, the memory of the righteous is blessed. 
I started meditating. Memory of the righteous is blessed. Memory of the righteous is blessed. Memory of the righteous is blessed. Now notice what it's doing. It's re-altering so the power can come through my spirit. And so now my soul, and one day my wife said, sweetheart, God told me in prayer that if you study three hours a day, you can make any grades you want. I said, praise God. You know, sometimes your wife sounds just like God. And so what happened? I took that three hours a day. Next thing I know, the grade time came. My grades came and the grades came and somebody was over the house and somebody said, oh, you all got the man. Oh, that looks like that's probably Bill's grades. I said, hey, go and mind your own business. You have this. I opened that thing up, four A's and three B's. How about the lady who came and whose drug dealers were taking over her her block in her, in, her, in her neighborhood. And I said, hey, take this oil, pour it down the middle of the street. Where I get that from? Where did I get that from? I got it from God. Where did he speak it to? Spoke it to my spirit. What do I have to do with my soul? Align my soul with my spirit. So it's gone. It might not sound logical, but it's true. Now, with this, you gotta, this is a step that most Christians haven't made. And because they haven't made this step, then there has been other ways they've tried to solve things that have not been God. Now, let me, let me go somewhere. I'm going to go somewhere and don't get mad about this. Okay, so this. So we got to get the Bibles back in the school. Now somebody said, well, you got Christian schools. Wait a minute. It didn't say the earth is, is uh, the earth and everything uh, but secular schools is the Lord's. Hey, everything in this earth is under our jurisdiction, everything. All right, now, people being treated unjustly. All right, let's look at that because in the last days, justice is gonna be one of the main targets of demonic abuse. In the last days, justice system of the earth is gonna be one of the main targets of demonic abuse. Now, Amos 5, 24, let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Put it up there in the other translation, please. But let justice roll down like a river and righteousness like a never failing stream. Who do you remember spoke that? Martin Luther King. He says, we're not gonna quit until justice rolls down like water and righteousness. Y'all don't remember that's in his speech? As a mighty stream. Now, what was he doing? He found out something about the justice system of heaven. That there is a justice system that's higher than the U.S. Supreme Court. And what has happened is God's people are supposed to be the ones executing this judgment and justice. Look what it says in Psalm 103 and verse one. I'll start there. In Psalm 103 verse one, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me, bless his what? Holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his what? Benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healed all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things and your youth is renewed like eagles. Keep going. Who the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. You see, when you know this and your soul is lined up, you don't panic and you don't get afraid. You know that you have rulership in this earth. Say amen to that. There, there is nothing just about the justice system of Pharaoh. But it was time for the people of God to be released. And I'm telling you, it's time for you to be released. This is a set time, Psalm 102, 13, of the favor of God. This is your release. Now, Moses said, Pharaoh, God told me to tell you, let my people go. What did Pharaoh do? Who are you? So what happened? 
Here comes judgment. Boom, water's turned to blood. Next judgment, frogs in the refrigerator. Next judgment, come on now, uh, animals died of a disease. Next judgment, crops got wiped out with, with locusts. Next, ju- this, this is just what is happening, it's God. And God is not in the business of killing folk. Look at Ezekiel, please. He said this, say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked should turn from his way and what? Live. God is not in the business of killing folk. He is warning Pharaoh, warning Pharaoh, warning Pharaoh, warning, but he just wouldn't he. Pretty soon he let him go, but he made one mistake after that. He went after him. He said, I'm going to get him, I'm going to kill him, or whatever have you. And what happened? God said, Moses, stick out the staff. Stuck it over the Red Sea, it split. God's people went through. Then he said, Moses, close it up. Right in the middle of Pharaoh and his army. And the Bible says there was not one left. I'm telling you what's been frustrating you this week is going to be your week. No, no. They thought they had Joseph. They thought they had him tied down and peril. They sent him to life imprisonment. Here he is down there. But notice Joseph, when the other king came and had a dream, Joseph said, why are you looking so sad? Notice how he can say that because he's not affected by what situation he's in. Don't confuse your condition with your portion. I'm telling you, God has got something good for you and you're not going to miss it this time. I decree it. And I'm saying right now in the name of Jesus, here's Joseph. And next thing you know, Joseph then said, hey, tell Pharaoh I'm up here. See, God, they went up there and forgot about him. Why? Because God don't need your help. God has prepared your deliverance before you even got in trouble. God. The program that you're watching is called The Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, we have a powerful teaching for you today. Today's message is entitled Living Large, Volume 2. Now, here's some important points I bring out in today's teaching. One, in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, he says to God, says to Abraham, and I will bless you and I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. Now, that's very, very important because that's the covenant that God made with Abraham. That's Abraham's part and that's God's part. Now, because of this blessing and that covenant, Abraham became very rich, not just rich, (laughs) very rich. Now, as a Christian, you and I, the seed of Abraham, are under the Abrahamic covenant. Now, we have a new covenant that God has given us, but we're entitled to the same blessing of wealth just as Abraham was. Now, when you get this wealth, God never planned for Abraham to keep it all himself. He said, and you will be a blessing. One of the scriptures says, and the translation says, you will dispense goods to others. See, God wants to bless you with more than enough so that you can help other people. Nothing on this earth can stop you from having what you are seeing and saying. Now, when I say seeing, I mean by revelation knowledge. If you can see it, if it's, it becomes alive inside of you and you speak it, nothing on this earth can stop you from having what you are seeing and saying. Praise God. Now, you don't want to miss any part of today's teaching. It's called Living Large. Let's go into it. One of the best ways that God has to speak to us is through his word, through his word. So you see me sitting up here speaking things out of the word of God. Remember, this word of God is God speaking to you. Say the word of God is God speaking to me. Next verse two. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. All right, let's go over to verse 15. 
He said, but it, it shall come to pass if you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord their God, so forth and so on. All these curses shall come on you and overtake you. And then he starts talking, verse 27. And the Lord shall smite you with botch, that's boils, of Egypt, and with emeralds, that's tumors. Somebody has a tumor in there over whatever have you. And with the scab, that's scurvy, and with itch, whereof you cannot be healed. Now notice all those things. And it said the Lord will do that. But it's not in the heap in the original. The original said the Lord will allow that to happen. You got what I'm saying? Now, who took your boils, your emeralds, your scab, and your itch? Say amen to that. So Jesus took it. So now you know why he says in James, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the who? Elders of the church. Let him anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick or heal the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. Watch this. And if there's been any sins, he'll be forgiven. See, if disobedience got you there, God saying, I'm going to clean you up and I'm going to forgive you for your disobedience. Now that you can't, you can't beat that with a stick. All right. Let's go on down. Verse 31, thy ox shall be slain before your eyes. That means you get fired or job taken away, whatever have you. Um, verse 32, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to other people. And thou shall carry out much seed in the field and shall gather in but little, for the locusts shall consume it. But what is he saying there? He's saying, hey, all this stuff I'm working on, I'm bringing this money home, but don't look like I got any. Wow. Look at verse 39. And thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. We're talking about the curses now. Who took the curses for you? Jesus took them. That's the goodness about the Lord. He took what you deserve. Man, you can't beat that. Verse 41. And thou shalt forget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Captivity. Go on drugs. Watch this. Go to jail. Go to prison. Captivity. No, no, no. That's under the curse. My kids are never supposed to go to prison. My kids are never supposed to go into captivity. Never supposed to go on drugs. Never supposed to. Say amen to that. Verse 44. And he shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. And he shall be the head, and you'll be the tail. Now that's not supposed to be that I'm supposed to be all doing all the borrowing. Supposed to be that I'm supposed to be doing the lending. Isn't this good? So what does the enemy try to do? He tries to get you to somehow rationalize this in your life and keep you from desiring to get out of it. See, and I'm telling you, it doesn't, this condition doesn't change just because uh, you're tired of it. It changed because you get delivered from it. You take this word, put it in your heart, let it change your soul, and God will deliver what you can see. Man, this is good preaching here. All right, so now let's go and the, these are the blessings. So let's go and see what happened. Because it's one more thing I want to cover here before I cover my last thing. Let's see what happened to Jacob. But well, we got to track Jacob through the Bible. And let's start at Abraham, his grandfather. And Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now I might repeat some things, but the, he, faith comes how? By hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, get thee out of that country from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I'm going to show you. So I'm warning you to leave the system that you've been dependent on and I want you to depend on me, Abram. I'll me I don't want you to depend on them. I want you to depend on me. Now what does he have to do? Sometimes you've got to take people out of their comfort zone so that they can depend on you. Say amen to that. All right, so now he's sending him somewhere. Now he got to follow God because, they, you know, we ain't had GPS at that time. So now 
He's following God and he ends up in a place where there's a famine. He said, I ain't staying here. Why? He's not used to the blessing that'll take and change any environment into the garden. So he's not used to that yet. He's got the blessing on him. Watch this in verse two, verse two, verse two uh, of Genesis. He said, now I'll make you a great nation, bless you and make your name great and you'll be a blessing. I'll bless those that bless you, curse those that curse you and be shall all families of the earth be blessed. So let's just take this verse two and look at it and amplify it again one more time. And he said this, he said, I will make you a great nation. I'll bless you with abundant increase of favors and make your name what? Famous industry. You should be known for something. I didn't say it, the book said it. All right, now Abraham departed. He says, Abraham, follow me. So look at verse, chapter 13 and verse one. And Abraham gone, went down to Egypt, told uh, Pharaoh that Sarah was his sister. But then when he took Sarah, his house got plagued. So I'm just telling you, when your blessing is on your life and you obey God, that those who are harassing you are going to be dealt with. Come on, those who try to take something from you. Ooh, we, this is good preaching here. All right, now, so look how he ended up. Verse one of chapter 13, Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him. And Abraham was how rich? Come on, it's, it's all right if you say this. Very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Now, what's the good news here? The good news is what Abraham obtained is also your right as a Christian and as a seed of Abraham. One more time. What Abraham obtained is also your right as a Christian and a seed of Abraham. You are included in the Abrahamic covenant. You are included in the Abrahamic covenant. You are entitled to wealth just as Abraham was. One more time. You, I'm putting this down in your spirit. You are entitled to wealth just as Abraham was. Now somebody said, well, what am I going to do with all that money? Boy, if you got to ask that, we, we got to go all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> Check it out. God does not want you to keep it all. He said, dispensing goods to others. Say amen to this. He wants you, see, if a person understands righteousness and are acting right, you don't have to talk to them about keeping it all. You don't have to talk to them about keeping it all. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. Watch this verse, check it out. Now he that ministers seed to the sore, both ministers bread for your food and multiplies your seed sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness. Go back to verse nine, please, glory to God. He said this, as it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he hath given to the who? poor and his righteousness remaineth forever. See a righteous person, you don't have to tell them to help other people. See, if God wanted you to keep it all, he just keep it where it is. Cause that's all they doing. But he's giving it to you so you can help him with this earth out here. So Abraham was very rich. Say it again in cattle, silver, and gold. Say, I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed, coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed going out. Monday morning, you're going to be blessed coming in. Yeah. And you're going to lean with it at that same time because favor is going to be on you. Say amen. Yeah. See, I just shared with you that you are included in the Abrahamic covenant and you are entitled to the wealth just as Abraham was. Say amen. amen. 
Abraham didn't work for that. That Pharaoh gave it to him. So Lot, so Lot didn't have no faith. And you know he didn't have any because in the next chapter, the bullies ran off with it. Ran off with him, his family, his, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, ran off with them all, took the wives, took the kids, took the family, took the furniture, took the refrigerator, took, took the cars, come on, took, took everything. And they told Abram about it in verse 14. And Abram heard that his brother's wife had taken captive and he armed his trained servants born in his own house. 300 and how many? 18. Where were they born? Did each one of them have to have a mama and a daddy? So there were more than them in the house. Now I'm saying as he blessed Abraham, He's got to bless me. Remember what he said, you got to fight for this stuff. You fight the good fight of what? Hey. So now he goes after Abraham. I mean, after Lot. And he gets him. And he slaughters the enemy. That's what the Bible said. Use the word slaughter. Not compete. Slaughter. Two different things. One of them is in the area of dominion. Now, he didn't get his, his military strategy from Yale. See, he, he didn't allow the strategies that are being taught in the universities to be all he used. Because if he did, they'd be competing. I'm not here to compete. Damo Nate. Look at Daniel, Daniel chapter one. He said this in verse 17. For these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had increasing uh, understanding, pardon me, in all visions and dreams. Now notice what he did. They might have gone to the same schools, but God adds some super on your natural. See, he'll give you a strategy that your, comp your, your competition or whoever it is does not have. Because he wants you to function at a much higher level. Let's look at that. Let's look at how high he wants you to go. Verse 20. He said this, he said, and all the matters of wisdom, understanding, the king inquired of them, he found them how many times better than his own folk. And they knew some stuff. That's why if you're going out here and you're trying to compete against the devil without God, you're going to lose. Folks, I was going in to visit one of the royal family when I was in one of the nations in Africa. So I'm coming in to that reception center where we'll go to receive. And I'm going in there. And as I get to the door, here's a witch doctor. And he's shaking beads at me. <laughs> now, wait a minute. The book tells you that can't no witchcraft hurt you. So, you know, see, if you panic, it's because your mind is not renewed, man. You, you got to get your mind renewed. Get the book and my mind renew your mind. Okay, so, so what happens now? So I go in there, but what is he doing, see? He's, he's adding his, his sorcery to that rule, to that reign. See, he's adding his sorcery. Now, that's the same thing that happened in Egypt. Because when Moses went down there, he said, Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, who are you? He said, and Moses took his stick and threw it down. And what did it turn into? A serpent. A serpent. What did the sorcerers do. See, y'all got to get this now. There is spiritual knowledge that God wants his people to have that nobody else has. Now understand God is good to all. The Bible says he calls, calls the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. So good to all. But as for you, who are the seed of Abraham and the blessed of the earth, 
he causes a special empowerment and flow of the anointing to be upon your life so that you could operate above any witchcraft, sorcery, anything that Satan has. You get a magician today and he stands and he does some magic trick and so forth. I dare you to catch it. I dare you to catch it. You can't catch it. You can't catch it because there are rules to it. He knows the rules of how you can do this. And Satan has rules to his sorcery. And that's when sorcerers are getting them books, man. And some of that stuff ain't passed on to everybody. It's passed on to only them some sorcerers. And I'm saying that it's conducting and manipulating spiritual laws. Yes. Well, God can have you operate above that because that, that, that's why you can't win against Satan without God, man. Yeah. Folks, what you got is to dominate. And it's to dominate anything that Satan can come up with. I said, you just don't come in and try to fix it. You bring forth creation. You bring forth something that'll give you a new organ, a new kidney, a new heart. Come on. You don't need to put a stint in that one. Get a new one. And your body say amen. And God's got a parts house in heaven that he got all these parts. And if something is damaging your body, all you do is get in that word, get the faith, then access it by grace and receive it and believe you've got it and start walking in it and watch the transfer take place. I'm going in the nations. They got stuff going on over there, but I'm not moved by it because it can't do nothing with me. I fly with angels on each wings. I fly. Folks, you got to understand who you are and what your inheritance is. Man. No evil shall befall you, neither any plague, no weapon formed against you. against you will be shut up and I'm saying you got dominion in this earth Amen. who was that Wigglesworth say walked in a room a man had levitated a chair all the way up to the ceiling and it was sitting on the ceiling he said in the name of Jesus come down the chair hit the ground I'm saying you got dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps in it. Give God some praise for that right there. Devil is a liar. Say amen. Now, let me finish this. Okay. So, notice what happens. Abraham brought back the goods and then he was confronted by the king of Sodom. King of Sodom said, uh, uh, give me the people and take the goods. He said, no, no, I can't do that. I've lift up my hand to the Lord. And he gave God tithes of all. Now I want to read something to you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, come on. Press down, uh-huh. Shaking together, uh-huh. Running over shall who? Men given to your bosom. Look at the second part of that. And with the measure you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Now what does that mean? It means that the level to which you engage God in your life determines the level of the results you're going to receive. Say amen. amen. You give him a little bit, he gives you a little bit. But when you tithe, when you tithe, you lift up your hand to the Lord. You make a tithing tells you to recognize that God alone is your source. That means you don't put everything on him and watch, he gonna put everything on you. And that's what I'm saying. People say, I can't afford to die. You can't afford not to. Because if you're going to be a part of this manifestation, you're going to have to fight your way to get there. And you need God on your side. 
You can't get all this without tithe. Well, what am I saying? Well, I said, well, we're going to convince you. You just stay around me long enough. We're going to convince you because you're going to see you're going to make much more than that 10% that you offered up to God. Say amen to that. All right, last thing, last thing. Okay, let's look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 23. Well, verily I say unto you that whosoever, say I'm a whosoever, whosoever. shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt where in his heart, but shall what? Believe that those things that he said shall come to pass, he'll have what? Whatsoever he said. Let's just stop right there. Now, what did I tell you believing was? Seeing. See, seeing. See, I got to see it before God will deliver it. So believing is seeing. Whatsoever things you desire when you play, pray, believe you've received them and you shall have them. Got it? So that was taken from what God taught Adam. And let me prove it. Go back to Genesis chapter 1, 1 again. In the beginning, God, what? Created the what? Heaven, then the earth. And the earth without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Watch it. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God, what? Say, let there be light. What, what, what happened? Did God believe what he spoke was going to come to pass? What is the difference between that verse and that one? And, and Mark eleven twenty four. Now, not, um, Mark eleven twenty three. Whosoever shall say to this mountain. Nothing on the earth can stop you from having what you are seeing and saying. One more time. Nothing in the earth can stop you from having what you are seeing and saying. Now, here's the first thing. The enemy will try to get you not to. To see it. Got it? But if you can see it, he'll try to get you not to say it because he knows the rules. Nothing, nothing leave that folks. Now, what makes this so? Genesis chapter one, verse 26, please. God said, let us make man how? That means the exact duplicate of kind. After our what? What? Operate the same way I do. 